we just wanted to give you a real quick demonstration of some of the neatest, coolest, and most powerful features within DaVinci Resolve Studio. That's the paid one. And I'm talking speed warps, magic masks, face refinement, and more. That's not even all of them. There's some that I don't cover in this video. He's being filmed at 30 frames per second, by the way. Idiot. Now, it's not a tutorial, this one. Instead, I just want to blast through them all really quick and show you exactly what they're capable of. Now, to run all of these, you do need quite a lot of graphical horsepower because every single one of them relies on your GPU to run. What are you running, Alex? <laughs> well, thanks for asking, Alex. I'm actually running an NVIDIA RTX 4080 GPU, which does a really good job. And you can get an NVIDIA GPU for yourself from this video's sponsor, scan.co.uk. Scan.co.uk, one of the biggest and most trusted resellers of NVIDIA Studio certified products in Europe. So whether you need Blackmagic panels, speed editors, pocket cameras, DaVinci Resolve licenses, gaming hardware, NVIDIA GPUs or NVIDIA Studio certified laptops, scan.co.uk has got you covered. So click the link down in the description below to check out Scan's line of NVIDIA Studio certified laptops and PCs, as well as all that other goodies. Right, let's jump into it and we're going to start off with Magic Masks. The Magic Mask function within DaVinci Resolve is an advanced rotoscoping slash masking tool, and you use it to automatically track and create masks around objects or people. And then once you've tracked and masked, you can do color grading, visual effects, or compositing, like shoving text behind people, all that sort of stuff, without the need for any manual, tedious masking and rotoscoping. So how does it work? It's really easy. Let me show you. So here we are on the edit page, and the first clip we've got is this, all these cars on the freeway, on the motorway. So let me just show you how this works. I'm gonna jump onto the color page, and then from this little menu bar in the middle here, there's this button. This is your magic masks. So we're gonna give that a click. Now there are actually two types. There's one for general objects, which I do find works really, really well. And then another one that's specific for people, which also then allows you to drill down into specific body parts or items of clothing, which again, super clever. So this one here, this is your object mask, and this is your person mask. And then you've got all of your controls like so. Now, all you need to do to actually use the mask at any point within the clip, let's just say we want to track this little Fiat 500, this little car here. We're just gonna do a little squiggle like so. Then we need to turn on this overlay. So there's a toggle mask overlay so we can see what we're tracking. You can see it's highlighted in sort of a pinky red. And then let's, let's track this forwards and back. And it's just gonna track that little car like so. Now there are loads of controls within here. There's actually a better version. I'm using faster just for this demonstration but you can see it's worked pretty well at tracking the car. If we just turn the overlay off, and then we can mess with some of the color and we could change the color of that car, whatever we wanted to do, like so. And that's Magic Masks. Now for the next example, I've got the example we used at the beginning. So there's these two versions of me. And let me show you how easy that was to create. I'm gonna to go to the color page once again. Let's just find a decent bit of me about there. I'm just gonna select all of this. And then we're gonna track. And that's tracked that through. Again, we could make any amendments, but for this demo, I won't. Now, what I actually want to do is get rid of the, the background, just keeping me. So within the nodes, we right click, add an alpha output, drag the blue box to the blue circle, and there we go. So now we're revealing the clip underneath. We could go in and clean it up, which is what I needed to do for the intro. But as a real quick one, you can see it's doing a remarkably good job. Now for the last example of Magic Masks, this time we're gonna switch to people. We're going to switch to the person mode. And then we can choose to either select the person as a whole or particular features. So if I go to features, I've got a little drop down. I can select things like face, hair, hat, clothing, whatever. So let's go with clothing top. And then we're going to do a little squiggle on his top. Let's turn on our overlay, see if it's got it. It has. And then we can track that forwards and backwards. Easy peasy. Job done. Magic masks are also now available in Fusion. 
but we're not going to cover that in this video. Instead, we're going to jump to the next one, which is depth map. A depth map is a grayscale representation of your scene, where the darker areas represent things that are further away and the lighter areas being closer to the camera. The dark areas will be least affected by the grade or the effects you apply, while the lighter areas will be the most affected. Again, it's using AI to look at the scene and figure out what's close and what's far away, which I personally find to be even more witchcrafty than the magic masks. So again, let's jump into the color page and I'll show you how they work. Cool, back on the color page. Now depth map exists within effects. So you have to open up effects, top right hand corner, and let's just search for depth. And then you drop the depth map on as a new node like so. And then it should show you the depth map in the preview. Now I'm just gonna change the quality to faster so it's a little bit speedier. But the black, the darker areas are further away and the light areas are closer to the frame. We can come to this resulting map adjustment and actually change the limit so we can bring the far limit in. So we can say, we don't want this wall at all. We'll get rid of that, make it completely dark and then make him a little bit lighter like so. Then to make any changes, you just turn the depth map preview off. We'll do a new node. I'm gonna hit Alt and S or Option and S and then connect this little blue box to the little blue triangle. And then in our color wheels, again, let's just change the color. And as you can see, the color is only affecting the person, the laptop, the desk, and not the background. Even when they start moving around later on, it's not affecting anything else. Now, if we used magic mask, we would have had to mask the person, the chair, the laptop, the desk, everything. But with a depth map, we can do it all in one big go. Now you can also apply effects. So let's just grab the mosaic blur. We'll drop that on here as well. Now we're blurring him, the laptop, everything else, but the background is staying as it was. If we wanted to flip that, invert the depth map, Job done. Spicy. Hey, next up, we're going to be talking about speed warp. The speed warp function is a fancy retiming tool used to create slow motion effects on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. And the reason it's cool is because you can use normal frame rate footage and turn it into slow motion, high frame rate looking footage. So what it does is analyzes and interpolates the frames, big words, and basically generates new frames in between. So it kind of fake, it makes those missing frames so that you can get some slow motion looking footage. Now, if there's ever an effect that's going to bring your system to its knees, it's speed warp. Trust me, it's pretty intensive to run. However, like all of these other effects, it's actually dead easy to set up. So let's take a look at me looking like an idiot. Speed warp, speed warp's actually done directly on the edit page. So here's the footage of me prattling around and we give it a click in the inspector, we come to speed change, and let's just set this to something mad like 10%. So actually we've only got three frames per second. Now, as you could guess, this is gonna look super choppy because it's gonna look basically like a slideshow. So we scroll down, go to retime and scaling, and then there's two options within here. In the retime process, we can go to optical flow. Now this one's not quite as resource heavy, and what this will do is basically try and blend the frames together It'll kind of smudge everything. It works in a pinch, but it's not perfect. And then to enable speed warp, we go motion estimation, speed warp. And now we're playing it, you can see it's actually filling in the gaps. It's not just smudging everything together, it's trying to fill in the frames, giving us much smoother slow motion. So here's another more practical example. We've got this person here doing a kickflip. This is something you may want to slow down. So let's go with, again, something slightly more realistic. Let's go with 25%. Again, it's like a slideshow at the moment. So let's do optical flow and speed warp. And now we've got this buttery, smooth kickflip. That to me looks like it's doing a really, really good job. Speed warp, it's basically magic, let's be honest. Next up, smart reframe. This is another relatively new one. And what it will do is automatically reframe footage for different aspects, ratios, and screen sizes. So if you've got some 16 by nine footage, but you're working on a vertical timeline, rather than having to zoom in and crop and reposition things manually, you can click one button and it'll do all the hard work for you. So Smart Reframe is directly on the edit page. So I've got some 16 by nine footage here, but it's on a vertical timeline because let's say we're repurposing this for TikTok, Instagram, or whatever. So first thing I do, let's just zoom it in so we fill the frame like so. Now, usually to track myself, I'd have to go and keyframe the position. But instead, underneath transform, you've got smart reframe. 
and you've got object of interest. This is the only real control you have over this tool. You can select auto or create a manual reference point. I'm going to go auto and then simply hit reframe. It's going to pick up what it thinks is the subject, aka me, and it's going to keyframe the position. So now if I hit play, it's going to track me throughout the frame, keeping me roughly in the center. It's not always perfect, but it's done a pretty good job. Certainly good enough for social media. Now let's give it something a little bit trickier. We've got a dancer dude here. So let's again zoom in. Let's just go to a random bit. I don't know, that'll do. And then reframe. Put them right in the center. Let's go to the beginning. And as you can see, it's moving us left and right and keeping this person right in the center of the frame. Smart reframe. Voice isolation, another relatively new one. This one improves the clarity and quality of any spoken word, dialogues, interviews, voiceovers, whatever. And what it essentially do is isolate the voice. So it will get rid of any unwanted ambient sounds. You simply toggle it on, it will keep the voice and get rid of everything else. It can really, really save your ass if you've got some bad audio. So we're going to use my stupid example from the intro, which is obviously the worst case scenario. But if you've just got a little bit of background noise, this one works really, really well. Noise isolation is another one that exists on the edit page. So here's the footage. Got music, we've got a vacuum cleaner and an electric drill. So to get rid of it, make sure your footage is selected, go to the inspector, audio, and then you've got voice isolation. Toggle the little switch to turn it on. And now if we hit play. But to run these effects well, you do need something with a lot of... Literally, all we can hear is my voice. The only controls you have is this amount. It will default to 100. Now it can start to sound a little bit artificial at 100. So all I tend to do, just bring it down. Let's just go with about 20. Hit play. But to run these effects well, you do... And you just adjust it accordingly. Obviously, with this stupid example, I need quite a bit on. But if you've just got an air conditioner in the background, a fan, a light bit of noise, you can actually get away with really low amounts and it will give you really, really good results. Next up, face refinement. Not one I find myself using all that often, to be honest, but it's quite impressive nonetheless. What this one will do is use face recognition and tracking technology, so they say. So it will automatically identify and isolate human faces within a clip. But it's not just the general face, it will pick up their eyebrows, their nose, their brow, their cheeks, their lips, their chin, whatever else. It's really, really clever. You can then obviously color grade and make changes to those specific items on a person's face. Like so. So face refinement is one you'll find on the color page. So let's hop into color. And again, it exists within the effects library. So let's just find face refinement. Now this one you can drop as a separate node or we can actually just drop it on this one directly like so. Then you'll have all of your controls within the effects area on the right. All you need to do, simply hit analyze and it's gonna pick up the face and it's gonna draw a little line around the chin, the eyes, the nose, the mouth and everything else. Leave that to process as it will track throughout the entire clip. And then you can turn the overlay off and then you simply use the controls within the effects library. So we've got skin mask, we can adjust all of that sort of stuff. We've got texture, we've got color grading, so we can increase or decrease the contrast on the face, the mid-tones, the color. And then you've got all the individual things like eye retouching, lips, blush, foreheads, cheek, chin. And you can even do multiple people within the same clip. All you would do is create a new node, drop another face refinement tool on there and repeat the exact same process as required. Or you can just mess around with it like I tend to do. <laughs> there you go. Next up, there's another face tool, which actually people seem to miss. It's been in there for a while, but it gets overlooked. And that is face detection. It's really cool, really clever. And again, people forget it's there. And like all the rest, super easy. Cool, so check this one out. We're on the edit page and I've got a couple of clips here. This is from like a wedding. So we've got bride and groom, just the groom in this one, just the groom in this one, and then bride and groom in this one. So what we're gonna do, select all four clips just within the media pool, right click, and there's an option to analyze clips for people. If we give that a click, it's gonna scrub through each of those clips and try and find some faces, which it's done. So then let's just give them a name. This can be Alex and this can be Clive, whatever. And then simply hit close. Now, if we go to DaVinci Resolve, top left-hand corner, preferences, user, 
editing, and there's an option here to create automatic smart bins for people. Tick that and then click on OK. And then within our smart bin, we've got people. And within people, we've got Alex and we've got Clive. So Clive has four clips because obviously he appears in all four. Alex only appears in the two. Super simple way of tracking other people within your footage and bundling them together. And last but not least, we've got super fast encoding with AV1. Now this one actually isn't just for studio users, but you do need to have a GPU with AV1 capability, like my NVIDIA RTX 4080, which actually has dual encoders. So what is it? Well, in a nutshell, it's just the latest and greatest video compression, meaning awesome looking footage with smaller file sizes, which is perfect for us to upload to YouTube and whatever else. So let me give you a quick demonstration of that, and we're gonna use that wedding you footage once again. So, AV1. This is the timeline of setup. We've got all of this wedding footage here. All of these clips are 4096 by 1712, 25 frames, and it's ProRes 422HQ. The timeline is exactly the same. Now, I've done a real basic grade on these, you know, just some minor adjustments and a LUT, the sort of thing that you may well do. So let's deliver. So we're gonna hop over to deliver, and all we need to do for this, MP4, and then I've got the option for AV1. Because I'm running an RTX NVIDIA GPU, I get AV1 NVIDIA. Same resolution, frame rates, quality is best. What I do also need to do is change my presets to very fast, and then add to the render queue. Now this timeline is one minute 30 something, so let's hit render and see how quick this is. I'm not gonna speed this footage up, you can see at the moment we're rendering this out about 180 FPS, 180 frames. So this one and a half minute timeline is going to be done in 14 seconds. I then did it again without OBS running and we managed it in just 10 seconds, hitting around 240, 250 frames per second. That's quick. And that's it for this one. I hope you found it useful. Big thanks to scan.co.uk for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. If you've got any thoughts, feedback, leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.